Well, good morning. Uh, well, good afternoon. Again, it's an honor to be here, and it's a, a privilege to also be reelected for my second term. I was elected in 2018 and took office in 2019. Previous to that, I was with the sheriff's office 22 years. He's going to take you to a second slide where it actually has a lot of information. I actually started as a clerk one at the sheriff's office at the age of 24, straight out of paralegal studies, and then from there promoted to criminal investigations and did all the criminal evidence for uh, the sheriff's office. But I also worked in warrants. The reason I actually ran for office because I needed to uh, get involved where there was automation needed, where there was preservation uh, needed to take place, where we needed to modernize the clerk's office. There are two clerks. There's a district clerk and there's a county clerk. The county clerk handles misdemeanors, has a judicial section, and then we also have a non-judicial section. We have 15 departments, 21 courts, that includes 13 criminal court at laws, two civil courts, three probate courts, an auxiliary jail court, a mental health court, and commissioner's court. DBAs are one of our essential responsibilities. We are the administrators of small business. Pr uh, prior to me, Mr. Rickoff was the longest serving county clerk. He served from 1995 to 2018. Him and I became friends. Actually, he's a Republican, I'm a Democrat. It's about being public servants, not about party affiliation. His actual brother was my captain at the sheriff's office. I used to work for him in criminal investigations. So as soon as I came in, I aligned my office with institutional knowledge, meaning the leadership that I have now were either managers or supervisors who are now under my administration are senior division chiefs or chief deputies. So I have a close to 300 years of experience in the county clerk's office. I took them off the menu and put them at the table where they can make changes myself as the first woman ever elected to the creation of Republic of Texas since 1836. That tells you why we work so hard. So moving forward, if you want to start a DBA, what I did notice that the county clerks across the state of Texas, there's 254 of us, and what happened was we're so used and accustomed to people coming to our offices instead of us coming to you all. And my way of thinking along with my leadership was coming to the community, building the community, connecting with the community, and informing the community what the clerk does. Not everyone knows what the clerk does. When we actually came into office, we built the records on the run. We had several town hall meetings with senior citizens and veterans, and they brought to our attention PTSD, missing limbs, cost for parking, inconvenience, just for a $20 document, a dollar document, and so on. So my team and I sat down with them and told them we're gonna mobilize. I knew we had a native cloud-based system, but we never mobilized into the community. So moving forward, in April of 2019, four months into office, I told my staff, we need to mobilize. They went and talked to our vendor. They uh, built an innovative project where it built the records on the run that got a local, state, national, and international award. Mind you, this is before COVID. I come from public safety, so I'm used to that business continuity, disaster recovery, and that came out before COVID took place. We mobilized all around Bear County. We had four stations that cost $26,000 that anything you do at the county clerk's office, whether you need to register your cattle brand, that's a business, whether you need to get a copy of a personal financial statement, whether you need a birth certificate or a death certificate prior to 1967, whether you need a copy of your deed, uh, any kind of commercial property, any foreclosure property, a copy of your business itself, you have to renew it every 10 years. So that's what we did. That mobile unit cost us 300 and something thousand dollars. It didn't come from general funds. Every county clerk has allocated funding on specific real property land records. That's by state. So that's what mobilized into the community to make sure that during the pandemic, when the lift funds and grant money came out, you weren't stopped. If you dream it, you go get it. I wanted to make sure that my office was actually in the trenches because we're in the north side of Bear County, but you have a strong underserved community in the west side, in the south side, southeast side, east side. I come from humble beginnings. I was born in the poor area of San Antonio. I married into the rural area of Bear County, so my husband actually is a deputy. I live in the rural south side where there is no transportation, lack of internet, not enough bandwidth, a government so far from communicating uh, or having any kind of communication with our constituents. 
So if you move on, the first thing we did in 2019, I had my staff visit all our departments, all our courts, any operation that pertain to the county clerk's office to act like the customer uh, who's coming in for service from the county clerk. Because if we don't put ourselves on the other side of the counter, we're not gonna learn how to improve our office. We noticed that for being the first Latina ever elected since 1836, for being the first woman, Dallas County Clerk had Spanish uh, information in the front counter. We're a 70% Latino community, we had no Spanish literature on our front counter. So we went a step further. We uh, collaborated with BCIT, our IT team, at the Bear County uh, Clerk's Office, and we implemented a 51 multi-language. We didn't just do Spanish, we're a very diverse community, so we implemented a 51 multi-language. We also like to work with our disabled community, our hearing and impaired community, and we implemented live chat. So even live chat drops down in 51 multi-languages. So we're able to communicate any way we can with our constituents. We were able to also preserve a lot of our historical collection. Uh, I don't know if you know how big Bear County was. Does anybody know how big Bear County was? You can't answer because I think you heard the presentation and neither can you, Rodney. So Bear, I was born and raised in San Antonio. So were my parents born and raised in San Antonio. My grandparents were, are from Spur, Texas, Martindale, Texas, Bastrop, Texas, and then Jalisco, Mexico. So Bear County included Oklahoma, Kansas, Colorado, New Mexico, and a little north of Wyoming. So a lot of your history goes back to 1717 in the county clerk's office. We have the most precious history, even a land grant, a land grant going back to 1699. How does this tie back to your business? You can see a lot of our old preserved businesses that were actually incorporated in Bear County. We also had trademarks that are also preserved in Bear County. Not only are we preserving the book, but we're also preserving it, digitizing it, and making it available to you, our constituents, so you no longer have to open a book. My biggest thing is also making sure that the history gets out because a lot of our historical books in the schools are erasing a lot of our history. And every county clerk in the state of Texas has the first written history of their county, respective county. After those five states, we gave birth to 128 counties that are around Bear County, going almost all Texas. I've taken my staff to other counties to show them the first book that they pull actually says Bear County on it. So moving forward, our veterans, we're a, a veteran a military SA. They're trying to build a business and we're trying to make sure that it's convenient to them. If you don't see the truck, you will see a pop-up. These four pop-up stations are the first ones designed from the clerk's office and they pop up anywhere in all precincts and all unincorporated. We do have 27 plus cities and a lot of unincorporated Bear County area. I live in Elmendorf, but I don't belong to Elmendorf, Texas. I belong to the unincorporated area. We partnered up with the Somerset, Texas. They're blooming in small businesses. We just partnered up with Kirby, Texas and we're trying to rebuild their economy because small businesses is what serves our small municipalities. And if we help them build back their small businesses, then their city will bloom and the county comes in to help them. As you move on, when I first became the clerk, what happened was the statue was changed. We do unincorporated, but we do not do incorporated. So if you want to do an LLC or a nonprofit, you will have to go through the Secretary of State. All that information will be in a pamphlet that you have in a package that my project coordinator or my staff gave you. Just because you cannot do an incorporated or a nonprofit in our office does not mean that we can't assist you. We make sure that we give you the information, the tools you need, even uh, show you to how to go talk to Swimby, small minority who's Renee Watson, so they can help you with bids in the county as well. We're looking forward to going back to the state what people don't understand that the county clerks or any elected official locally follows the law. Your state reps and your representatives are the ones that make laws for us. My constituents have been asking me, why won't you bring back the incorporated back to Bear County? Why can't I file it in Bear County? I have to follow the law of whatever is put in place and we are gonna try to uh, present a bill to bring back the incorporated of, they may file their incorporation in Bear County. And then we're gonna move on to businesses. If you see here, that's gonna be my office. 
We are about to put out the first satellite office in the south side because the mobile unit will continue serving all northeast, south, far northeast. It goes everywhere. You name it. You want to partner with us. If he said tomorrow, can you partner with me? Can you come out to our community so our public can have access to your records? We set up an appointment. We work on the flyer. We collaborate to do a presentation. And we'll make sure that we share it on Nextdoor app, on all our social media plug plugins, just to make sure that we have a lot of people come in. Saturday at Kirby, Texas, I was very surprised on the turnout. A lot of these constituents uh, don't know about filing already release of lien once they pay off their home. We're talking about gentrification. It's taking place because our older generation doesn't understand about recording the release of lien in the county clerk's office. We also put somebody, something in place called a property alert. It's free. Every county clerk in the state of Texas is doing it to protect your assets, your personal assets. Sadly to say, it's sometimes it's your own siblings or your own children who are transferring deeds and committing all this fraud among your properties that you work for. It's not expensive to work with the county clerk's office. It's 20, it'd probably be about $21 to file your DBA doing business as an assumed name. We also sit down and we have the information uh, in whatever language you want, but we have to record it in English uh, with county government. But we can do the research for you. If you file a DBA and you have a question about your business name, we will assist you. We will take you through the process. We are not just going to leave you alone and you try to figure it out. We've made the unit to be more of personal approach to make sure that you have all the information you need. And if you need anything else, we'll guide you to another resource if you need that. I'm going to move on to the next slide. Another thing that we noticed was the county clerk did not even accept credit cards, guys. I came in in 2019 and I looked at the counter and all I saw was a lot of our customers going to the ATM to go get money to come pay for a dollar document and getting charged $3 for their credit card or $5 and getting charged $3 for an ATM charge. So within a few months, I talked to IT and I talked to my team and we all sat down and had a conversation. And I said, y'all need to figure it out. We need to accept credit cards. We went from a certain million dollars to more than almost half of a million dollars just by offering the service and credit card accessibility. But it's a convenient. I literally was pushing seniors in wheelchairs because I have the probate office and it only costs $5 to deposit a will into the Bear County probate office. So they're going to the ATM, handicapped in a wheelchair, seniors, to pull money just for $5 costs. So you can actually deposit your will into the county clerk's office as well too. Uh, we have a, a lot of information that's placed everywhere. We try to offer the best service. We do ask you all if you have any concerns or any ideas or anything that you want to offer us to better serve our community, we don't take criticism uh, in a bad way. We take it to heart and try to make corrections. I actually talk to attorneys on the judicial side, and what does that have to do with business? Sometimes you get sued in your business if you have a DBA, and I'll see a judgment in my civil department, and then they'll file it in record uh, in the recording office. So there's some judgments that are filed that are public records. So all the records are free. All the records, if you go to the Bear County Clerk's Office, a lot of our uh, real property land records are available to you online. But not all the community has a printer. How many of you all have a printer at home? Your son doesn't have a printer at home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Well, what I'm saying is not everybody has a printer at home. Not everybody has internet access. Not everybody can afford internet. Not everybody has enough bandwidth. So that's why we take out the unit for a very little cost for convenience for our constituents. But if you go to the Bear County Clerk's Office and if you go to a real property or official public records, you can literally look for a marriage license, a DBA, uh, any public information and print it from the comfort of your own office or your own home. That's available free. Also, we do free training. If you all want to train on how to search for closures, real property, or anything to do with the county records, we have something uh, called official public record search. We do a, a quarterly training. It's free. About 100 or 200 people jump on there, and it's uh, realtors, brokers, bankers, attorneys, paralegals, 
because they want to learn how to search our records. And we want to make sure that you have the tools you need to search the records. If you open a business with the county clerk's office, you have to renew it every 10 years. Six months prior to your business expiring, please renew your business. If you change your address, so you got married and changed your name, you have to file an abandonment and do a refile. We are seeing a lot of our younger people around the courthouse, we call them sharks. They're going around the courthouse and they're going through our records to see how many businesses are expired and they're buying the business and you have to look for them. So we're asking you, if you do have a DBA or assumed name with the county clerk's office, please renew your business six months prior to your 10 years. We are working on trying to grab more information because we want to make sure that we remind you because we all move on or we pass away or something takes place. We want to put something in place. We want to remind you and alert you to please renew your business. So what else do I have there? Is that it? Uh, please go ahead and get the a QR. The QR has a lot of information. If you ever want to do genealogy to learn more about your family, they don't have to live in Bear County. They don't have to have been born in Bear County. If you're doing family search, you can visit our Spanish archive department located right across the beautiful old red historical courthouse. Dr. Carlson works for us. He's there from eight to five. You can go there with your family and learn so much about your family. I've done mine. He took me back seven generations and it's so exciting and it's so empowering uh, to allow your family who you are and where you come from. And sometimes you'll be surprised. I mean, even I, when I came back, I knew I was Native American, but my father always claimed Italian and they came back 46% European, Italian, Iberian, Spain, and Portugal, 36%. So 5.6% uh, African American. So the 46% surprised me. Uh, I knew they probably were Spanish because they had green eyes from my father's side and they were very medium light-skinned, but I didn't believe him that he was Italian. Every Hispanic wants to be Italian. But it was very nice to see that it was true. So if you want to visit and you want to learn about your business and you want to empower your family, please take advantage of it. It's free. We have people from other countries that come and see us. And we're going to do an actual press release when we're going to release all our records online. And we'll let you all know so you can go ahead and see the precious records of the first written history of all the businesses, all the trademarks, all the beautiful information that lays in Bear County. I just won my second term uh, in 2022, so I just came back to work. Our next project, because of the laws that have changed, we're about to bring out kiosks because now we can do more remote services. So what we're building is a kiosk that we want to partner up with businesses where you're going to have access to a clerk from central location and you will go up to the kiosk and press the button and you're gonna say, hi, I'm here to do a marriage license. And the clerk will come through, get you through the process and you will be able to walk away with your marriage license, go get married and come back and feed it back into the kiosk and then go about your business and we record it. You'll be able to print deeds, any kind of uh, affidavit airships, anything that's in my official public records will be available at the kiosk. The county clerk in Nevada, Las Vegas, Ms. Deborah, she got an international award for it. She shared the project with us and she took the mobile unit project from us. So we switch projects. And she's a very innovative clerk. She's in Vegas, Vegas moves so fast. She had kiosks in the airport. She had a kiosk in the airport because everybody's getting married in Vegas. So we're looking at working with the state and they can work with us with a small business if you can do the same thing. Right now with the DBA, you have to get it notarized or go to the clerk and get it uh, you know, recognized. But I want to see how we can get the kiosk to spit off from the, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the DBA to spit off from the kiosk so you can go to the bank, do what you need to do. I want to make sure with my team that we don't get between you and your dream or you and your future. I want to make sure that we have you uh, having access to whatever you need from the clerk's office. So I'm open to questions. <laughs>